and a warm welcome to MFC TV News Hour. I am Sheriff Atunno Mohammed. The headlines Federal Government State to combat hunger with Operation Feed Yourself. Police to gain new salary structure. Kogi State Governor Yahabilu says direct primary election is not a threat. And Senate urges Federal Government to prosecute terrorist financiers. Now the news in detail. Vice President Emi Osiban just said that as part of efforts to address malnutrition and related challenges in the country, the federal government in collaboration with states is considering under the support of the National Economic Council and the National Council on Nutrition an Operation Feed Yourself initiative to encourage the establishment of urban farms and small home gardens. Osiban just stated this at a high-level meeting on nutrition attended by United Nations Deputy Secretary General Amina Mohammed, state governors, representatives of development partners, including UNICEF, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the Alin Kodangote Foundation, and convener of the UN Food System Dialogue. Olushala Idowu, who is also the Permanent Secretary, Budget and National Planning Ministry. The plan for Operation Feed Yourself is one of three major plans arising from the UN Back Food System Dialogues to advance the fight against malnutrition. Others are providing support to farmers across the country, especially by providing useful weather and soil pattern information that will improve views and encouraging state governments to ensure prompt release of budget for nutrition and related activities. At the meeting, presentations were made by the Deputy Secretary General, the Dialogue Convener, for the state government which already has an integrated farming model and the Director General of Nigeria Meteorological Agency on how weather information can be helpful to farmers. According to the Vice President in a statement by his spokesman, Lao Luakande, there are practical steps that can be taken by the state and federal government in the next 12 months. The VP listed the different stages as the establishment of agribusiness investment hub of farmer settlements, the establishment of urban farms and homestead gardens by individuals and schools, the adoption of weather information to support farming, leveraging the support of the UN agencies and other partners for nutrition activities, and the call on MDAS and states to release funding for nutrition activities. Osibanjo urged state government to adopt partnerships that can be effective in scaling up nutrition and related activities. Federal government has disclosed that a new salary scale for the Nigeria police will soon commence following the National Incomes and Wages Commission submission of the proposal for an upward review. The Minister of Police Affairs, Mohamed Dinyadi, stated this when he appeared before the Joint National Assembly Committee on Police Affairs to defend the Ministry 2021 budget performance and 2022 proposal. He said the year under review started in the midst of challenges such as the effect of COVID-19 and NSAS protests, which inflicted serious social, moral, economic, and security setback for the police. Dinyadi said the situation was further compounded by the myriad of security challenges such as terrorism, banditry, kidnapping, armed robbery and sectionist agitations cutting across all the six geopolitical zones of the country. The minister, however, said in spite of these challenges, the ministry has remained focused and extended unnecessary requests of support to the Nigeria police in the fight against this criminality. The commandant, Nigerian Police Academy, Udil Kanu, AIG Lawal Jimita lamented manpower shortages in both the academic and administrative wings of the academy. He said the academy has cadets trained presently of over 3,300 and they are expected to be provided with qualitative education, conducive accommodation, three meals a day and combat training facilities among others. There is hope that police will be well taken care of when the budget is passed. No fewer than 108 suspects allegedly impersonating men and officers of the Nigerian Navy have been arrested by the Lagos State Police Command. The State Commissioner of Police, Hakim Odumosu, said the suspects were arrested during a raid on their training camp in the Ogudu Sanfid area of the state. While parading the suspects at the command headquarters in Ikeja, Odumosu said that the commanding officer of the training camp, Sunday Dakare, was also arrested, adding that the suspects were operating under the name of the Nigerian Merchant Navy also called the Coastal Defense. Odumosu said on November 10, 2021, around 11 a.m., the Lagos State Police Command raided the illegal training camp of the Merchant Navy, located in the Ogudu Stanford area, Lagos State, and arrested the commanding officer, Sunday Dakari, 47, together with 107 suspects currently on training. He said there has been credible, actionable intelligence on the illegal activities of the Merchant Navy, 
following with the command and back on the intensive surveillance of the camp and its activities therein. Consequent upon intensive monitoring of the camp and its operators, the command carried out a well-coordinated overt operation at the training camp. During the raid, which was coordinated by the operations department of the command, the following items were recovered. Several military accoutrements, including camouflage bags of ranks, a flag, a signboard, and ID cards. Other items recovered include recruitment letters, promotion letters, a portrait of the commanding officer, two motorcycles, one plasma TV, three cutlasses, criminal charms, and other items. The CP who urged members of the public to be wary of people posting as military personnel to carry out illegal operations in the state noted that the federal government had outlawed the Nigeria Merchant Navy. He said the police, however, discovered that the group had been operating illegally since 2005. This trend portends danger for the nation and a threat to peace and security. It therefore behoves law enforcement agencies to enforce the law banning activities of the illegal military outfits. He warned individuals or groups still operating such illegal outfits in any part of the state to close it forthwith and that the police will not hesitate to clamp down on them and their operators and bring them to book. Kogi State Governor Ehabelo has reacted to the Senate's approval of direct primaries for all elections. The governor who appeared on the popular channel's television program Politics Today, anchored by Shen Woki Baloye, said none of the state governors is afraid of direct primaries to elect leaders of their parties. Governor Ehabelo said it will only make the contestant test their popularity among the people. We as governors, I don't think anybody is afraid of direct primaries. You don't no. feel threatened. The governors don't feel threatened. No governor. That's the impression from the National Assembly. No governor, I can tell you. Not APC, not PDP, not APGA. At least these are the parties that we have to meet. I will always caution that whenever we are making law or taking decision, we shouldn't be basing it on the impulse of the moment. He said under the leadership of President Muhammad Buhari, who wanted to put governance and the rank of free party system, has set up a tripartite committee headed by the vice president. They always provide cordial relationship among the three arms of government, and the system is working perfectly. Governor Bello said the lawmakers are elected to do their jobs without interference. Having experienced what happened in, the first, in his first term, between 2015 and 2019, where there is this rift between the party and those in the executive, between the executive and the legislature. So this time around, he decided to set up a tripartite uh, committee headed by Professor Yemi Oshimbajo, the vice president. And then to address any topical issues that will affect the nation generally in order to have a smooth passage. And it has been working very fruitfully. Governor Bello used Kogi State as a good example of what the APC is doing to keep the system working as a party with one voice. Do you determine who goes to the National Assembly from your state? The party determines who. But you are the leader of the party in the state. Of course. Ours is just to provide the lead. And the people determines. He said by accepting direct primaries is not bad, but suggested a provision for an option to avoid unforeseen doom. The drafters of the party constitution, especially as it affects APC, envisaged that there could be a situation where one particular mode of primaries may not be feasible, then you adopt another. But let me tell you, there are certain implications that we're not looking into. If you say direct primaries, it means in every polling unit, elections must hold. And if in every polling unit we have 30 political parties today, it means INEC must supervise 30 general elections. Member of the Senate and former governor of KB State, Adamu Alero, said it will create a balance between the people and the government. We stand on the legislation passed by the two chambers of the National Assembly. And it is irreversible. We have concluded that uh, um, the law stands. Uh, we are returning the party back to the people that is conducting direct primaries. We believe that uh, that is the only way we can ensure uh, internal democracy within the old progressive Congress. Um, the conduct of the Congresses, right from the world level up to the state level, was being hijacked by the governors. And uh, we felt that as a remedy to this, in order to save our party, uh, it's better we adopt 
the direct primaries. This is the only way the party uh, can survive and can face uh, all other parties that will contest uh, with the All Progressive Congress. We have respect for the governors, we have respect for the members of the executive, and we have always done their bidding. But this time around, we want direct primaries to stay. While senators of the ruling APC and the opposition PDP parties unanimously agreed to direct primaries across all stages of elections, gave the INEC power to witness all proceedings. The ruling All Progressive Congress APC has said it will soon hold its national convention once it resolves issues arising from recently conducted state congresses. On the decision of the National Assembly that political parties should adopt the direct method of conducting primary elections, KB State Governor and Chairman of Progressive Governors Forum, PGF, Atiku Abubakar Bagudu, said his colleagues pick holes in the decision of the National Assembly with regards to direct primary. According to him, political parties are self-administering voluntary organization that should be free to adopt any method to choose their candidates. Paguru added that the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, could also be overstretched if it was hard to do with supervising the direct primaries of all parties. In the lead up to the 2019 general election, the leadership of the APC had adopted direct primary option in most states of the Federation and for its presidential primary election. Section 871 of the Electoral Acts Amendment Bill, as passed by the Senate, provides that a political party seeking to nominate candidates for elections under this bill shall hold direct primaries for aspirants to all elective positions, which shall be monitored by the Commission. Several parties had earlier found that the decision, but avoid a frontal attack on the lawmakers. The Senate has urged President Mohamed Buhari and the executive branch to take tough measures against all terrorist financiers and money launderers in Nigeria. Senators made the demand while debating two bills, the Money Laundering, Prevention and Prohibition Bill of 2021 and Money Laundering, Prevention and Prohibition, Repel and Reenactment Bill of 2021. Senator Umar said President and his colleagues, many public servants who are entrusted with managing public funds for the benefits of the larger society, are often accused of creating phantom companies. Overpricing of contracts, use of funds to pay for contracts not executed or poorly executed while others have been accused of cutting away huge sums of public funds and stashing it in foreign bank accounts. Against this backdrop, successive governments have focused on the prevention, interdiction and punishment of money launderers. Senator Smart Adeyemi representing APC Kogi West said that President Mohamed Buhari's administration had done more to battle corruption than past administrations. He stated that there is no doubt that the government, more than any other government in the country's history, has taken the war against money laundering and corruption as a duty that must be accomplished. In seconding the bill, he called on the president and lawmakers to equally look at how they can enlighten the net of exposing and arresting those who have siphoned money out of Nigeria. The committee chaired by Senator Suleiman Abdukwari was given four weeks to report to the upper chamber. Senator Suleiman Umar representing APC Kwara North and Suleiman Abdukwari representing APC Kaduna North are the sponsors of both legislations. The federal government has had a total of 3,906 prisoners who fled some of the nation's custodial sector during various incidents of prison breaks are still on the run. Interior Minister Obeni Raouf Arebeshola disclosed this during the weekly ministerial briefing hosted by the presidential media team at the presidential villa in Abuja. Ari Beshala said a total of 4,369 inmates escaped from the centers from 2020 till date, adding that 984 of the numbers had so far been recaptured. The minister, however, noted that the biometrics of all custodial inmates in the country had been taken, which he said would enable the escapees to be arrested. He said, how long would we continue to run from the state? The state is a patient bed. They can run, but they can never hide. He also said that 465 inmates are running various degrees around the country, adding that 85 of these are running postgraduate programs, including four who are doing PhD programs. According to him, 560 inmates have been enrolled for YEC NECO examination, while 2,300 are enrolled for adult literacy classes in several custodial centers. Kogi State Commissioner for Information and Communication, Ken Fanwo, has congratulated the Elulu of Mopa and Chairman. Opamoro Local Government Traditional Council. His Royal Highness Oba Julius Joledo on his 80th birthday. Fanwo said the Royal Father has been a great leader and the custodian of the Mopak tradition, an extraordinary personality. His words, 
their royal father was an accomplished bureaucrat and business mogul before becoming the early law of Mopa. He brought his touch of finesse and excellence to the royal school. Baba is an embodiment of brilliance, humanitarianism, and vision, who has made remarkable marks in his first course on planet Earth. On behalf of his family and members of the KF Foundation, we salute the Lulu for leading them purposefully over the years. Fan will pray that KPSC will continue to mark many more decades in good health and prosperity. Baba is young at 80, an exemplary royal father who brought dignity and respect to royalty. It is their prayer that he will continue to celebrate many more decades in good health and prosperity for him and the land. You are still watching MLC TV News. More stories to come after the short break. We'll be right back. Malachi TV Online is here for your timely and reliable news that reaches you fast with the breaking news. Choose MLC TV. Get human interest stories right here on MLC TV with entertainment, sports, business, culture, tourism, and fashion news stories all featured on MLC TV. Not forgetting political and current affairs news, state and federal government and people's matters will be discussed regularly on MLC TV. MLC TV, your one-stop online destination for unbiased, accurate news, entrepreneur ideas and youth matters to the rest of the world. MLC TV, reaching everywhere, informing everyone. Welcome back. Now to our foreign news. There are no plans to make it mandatory for health and care staff in Greenset to be vaccinated against coronavirus, head bosses have said. UK Head Secretary Sajid Javid has announced all frontline NHS staff in England will have to be fully vaccinated by April. But Greenset Health Committee said it was not currently planning to adopt the same policy. It said there was already a 96% uptake among staff locally. An HRC spokesperson said due to the high level of uptake, they did not feel it was necessary. The spokesperson added, they also think the best way to encourage people to take up the offer of the vaccine is by explaining the reasons why they are recommended to do so. Chinese President Xi Jinping has warned against returning to Cold War era tension in the Asian Pacific region, urging global cooperation ahead of a virtual meeting with his U.S. counterparts. In a recorded video message to a CEO forum on the sideline of the Asian Pacific Economic Cooperation Apex Summit, Z said that attempts to draw ideological lines or form small circles on geopolitical grounds were bound to fail. The Asian Pacific region cannot and should not relapse into the confrontation and division of the Cold War era. The Chinese president's remarks were an apparent reference to U.S. efforts with regional allies and partners, including the Quad grouping with India, Japan, and Australia to blunt what they see as China's growing coercive economic and military influence. Tensions between China and the U.S. have soared in recent years, with Washington raising concern about Beijing's actions in the South China Sea, as well as its stance on Hong Kong, Xinjiang, and Taiwan. Amid the friction, the two sides began to improve communications, and in October, officials announced that Xi and U.S. President Joe Biden will hold a virtual meeting before the end of the year. Ethiopian authorities have rounded up high-profile Targaryens from a bank CEO to priest, as well as United Nations staff in a mass crackdown on suspected supporters of rebellious Northern forces. According to people linked to the Dissenese, police denied targeting the Targaryen ethnic group, saying those arrested were believed to have links to the Tiger People's Liberation Front, which has fought central government for a year. The war has killed thousands, forced more than 2 million people from their homes sucked in troops from neighboring Eritreans and left hundreds of thousands in famine. Fighting has spread into neighboring Afar and Amharas regions, threatening the stability of Ethiopia and the wider Horn of Africa. Ethiopia declared a state of emergency last week as Targaryen forces pushed south towards the capital, Addis Ababa, that allows for indefinite detentions and requires citizens to carry ID cards that can indicate ethnic origin. The United Nations said on Tuesday, at least 16 Ethiopian staff and dependents were detained but has not specified their ethnicity. On Wednesday, it said nine were still in custody. The Ethiopian Human Rights Commission said the arrest of Targaryens, the latest and repeated waves documented, were at least in the hundreds, including elderly people and mothers with children. 
One senior Ethiopian officer told Reuters that the tensions were out of control. Belarus accused of state terrorism over migrant crisis. President Mohamed Buhari has condoled with President Mohamed Bazou of Niger Republic over the death of 25 school children during a classroom fire outbreak in the Maradi region of the country. The victims were aged between 5 and 6 years. President Buhari, in a condolence message issued by his media aide, Karl Bashe, who said, His words, I am greatly shocked and deeply touched by this tragedy that took the lives of these school children. The death of these children in these circumstances is particularly moving. My heart and prayers go out to the government and people of Niger Republic, as well as the grieving parents of these innocent children. The deaths are following a devastating foil tanker explosion last week in Sierra Leone's capital, Freetown, has risen to 131 according to authorities. Another 63 people were still being treated in four Freetown hospitals, with 19 of them being in a critical condition. Mohamed Lamran Abbah, Director of Communication at the Government's National Disaster Management Agency, said on Wednesday, The tragedy on Friday occurred on a busy junction in Willington, Eastern Freetown, where a foil tanker was hit by a truck which later caught fire. Victims included motorbike drivers who rushed to collect leaking fuel coming from the tanker, roadside female traders, and commuters trapped in minibuses that were backed up along the usual busy road. Posters with photos of the missing and dead have been struck on walls and buildings around the site. More than 70 bodies were charred beyond recognition, and relatives of the missing told Al Jazeera that they are now assuming their loved ones were among them. Like numbers of people attended in Masbury on Monday, where some 75 unidentifiable bodies were laid to rest in a cemetery that also hold victims of the 2014-2015 Ebola outbreak and a 2017 mudslide. The country's worst natural disaster, which killed more than 1,100 people. Government officials said tissue samples taken from each of the bodies will be sent abroad for testing. The corpse were numbered and tissue sampled were also numbered before being taken for burial. These are being sent abroad for DNA testing and it could take some months for results to return, said Austin Kenan, the Sierra Leone country director for Consign Worldwide, a humanitarian organization helping with the process. Graves are also being numbered so they can identify people in the coming months, with the hope it will bring some solace to those who have lost loved ones in this awful and heartbreaking tragedy. The former president of South Africa and the last white person to lead the country, F. W. D. Clerk, has died at the age of 85. His spokesman said the clerk, who was also a key figure in the nation's transition to democracy, had been diagnosed with cancer this year. D. Clerk was head of state between September 1989 and May 1994. In 1990, he announced he was releasing anti apartheid leader Nelson Mandela, leading to multi party polls in 1994. A statement from the former president F. W. de Klerk Foundation on Thursday morning read, Former president F. W. de Klerk died peacefully at his home in Fenaya, Cape Town, earlier this morning, following his struggle against mesothelioma cancer. The foundation had announced the diagnosis a cancer that affected the lining of the lungs in June this year. F. W. de Klerk had taken over from P. W. Butter as the head of the National Party in February 1989. And the following year announced he was removing the ban on passes that included Mandela's African National Congress. His action helped bring an end to apartheid era South Africa, and he became one of the country's two deputy presidents after the multi-party elections in 1994 that saw Mandela became president. He shared the Nobel Peace Prize with Mandela in 1993. Now to our sport news. Portugal midfielder Bernardo Silva will miss Thursday's World Cup qualifier away to Ireland due to muscle issues. Manager Fernando Santos told reporters on Wednesday. Silva, who has been in terrific form for his club Manchester City this season and was instrumental in their Premier League debut win against Drivers United at the weekend, missed training on Monday and was also absent on Tuesday. Santos said he doesn't count on him. He has muscle complaints. He doesn't think he has the condition to go to this game. They think he will be okay for Serbia. He arrived tired, complaining. He has many games on him and couldn't go to training. But he's recovering well and we hope and we believe he will be able to play here with Serbia. The game in Dublin against Ireland is crucial for Portugal. Who trailed leader Serbia by a point in Group A but have the game in hand. 
English Premier League Aston Villa have appointed Steven Gerrard as manager on a three and a half year deal, ending his three year reign at Rangers. The former Liverpool captain leaves the Scottish champions, having guided them to a first league title in 10 years last season. Gerrard replaces Dean Smith, who was sacked on Sunday after a run of five successful defeats. Villa has 16th in the Premier League, two points above the relegation zone. Gerard took his first step in senior management with Scottish Premiership side Rangers in 2018 and leaves with them four points clear of rivals Celtic at top of the table. Gerard played 710 times for Liverpool, winning nine trophies and spent a season at MFC side LA Galaxy in 2015 before retiring as a player the following year. He coached at Liverpool's Youth Academy before managing the other 18 team during 2017 to 2018 season. Gerard joined Rangers in May 2018, signing an initial four-year deal before agreeing a new contract until 2024 the following year. Speaking after his departure, Gerard said he would like to express his sincere gratitude to everybody associated with Glasgow Rangers for giving him the opportunity to manage such an iconic football club. Now to Matthias Aideji for entertainment news. On our entertainment news today, organizers of Best of Nollywood Born Awards are set to honor late Nollywood filmmaker Chiko Ejiro with a special recognition award. According to reports, the filmmaker will be honored alongside actress Abiola Atonda, popularly known as Madame Kufo, at the award ceremony stated for December 11, 2021. This special recognition, even though Postumus struck the team the most because we would have loved that he was alive to receive the award himself, Bon Awards founder Sean Olokutui revealed in a statement. Many in Hollywood owe their career and sources to Chico, and even though we are sad to have lost him, this award is to help people remember his enormous contribution to the industry. With over 100 titles to his credit, Chico Ejiro is regarded as one of the most successful filmmakers of the 90s and early 2000s. Nicknamed Mr. Prolific, the film director died on December 25, 2020. He was reportedly working on the film before his shocking demise. Still on entertainment news, television star Ayola Ayolola has finally reacted to his exit from fan favorite web series The Men's Club. The actor, who is currently in the United States, recently took to his Instagram account to debunk earlier claims that he exited the show without formally notifying the production team, which left them no choice but to find a replacement. Contrary to what was said, I did not relocate without letting the executive producer and producers of the show know, Ayolola wrote. My decision to make a temporary move out of the country was a long thought out of process in which the producer, my manager at that time, was aware and involved in. With that being said, I cannot wait to be back on your screens again. We call that fans call out the head of the Red TV show producer after it was announced earlier this week that the character Aminu will be replaced by Bibi Ninja Season 6 housemate Pere Egbi. Following the brutal online attack, the show's lead writer, Dami Elebe, shared a series of tweets suggesting Ayola travel plans attempted to sabotage the hard work of the entire crew. Prior to his controversial exit, Ayola stayed alongside F.I. Iwara, Daniel Etim F. Young, and Baj Adebule in the web series. And that is all on entertainment since today. My name is Matthias Ayodeji Peter, reporting for MLC TV. Thank you, Matthias, for the updates. And that's today's news package. Join us tomorrow via the same channel. For sponsorship and advert placement, call the numbers displayed on the screen. Or visit our social media handles, Facebook at MLC TV, Instagram MLC TV 2021, YouTube Malachi TV. I am Sherif Atonino Mohammed. Thanks for staying with us.